Yeah. 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 Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order. The time is 7.33. It is the regular city council meeting for August 22nd. Can you please do roll call? Yes. Councilwoman Aaron? Here. Mayor Portem Bliss? Here. Councilman Fleming? Councilor Rohrbach? Here. Councilman Soltis? Here. Councilor Wright? Here. Mayor Gravstein. I am here, thank you. Can I please have a motion to excuse Councilman Fleming? He did give notice. Your Honor. Yes. So moved. Thank you. Can I get support? Support. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Councilman Fleming has been excused. The invocation and Pledge of Allegiance this evening will be led by Councilor Wright. I ask that you stand if you are able, please. Here we go. Bow our head, close our eyes. Father of all creation, we, walk, we come before you today to give honor and praise. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to come together today, this day. We ask for your hand on the blessing of this meeting. Give us a spirit of teamwork, encouragement, patience, and understanding. Thank you for helping us to accomplish our work and our goals for the day. Yeah. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First up, we have approval of the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions this evening? All right, seeing none, we're going to go to presentations uh, by the Madison Heights Community Coalition. We're going to be providing an update. Ms. Heisler, the floor is yours. Here. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Kimberly Heisler. I am the Executive Director of the Madison Heights Community Coalition. Thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. I just wanted to share with you a few updates and let you know what's happening in our community, what we've been doing. Um, I think you will like it. Let's see. Wrong way, there we go, I apologize, I'm learning to use this. Um, who are we? So we're a coalition in Madison Heights formed to um, prevent substance abuse in our community with a focus on youth. What's important that you understand is that our community coalition is made up of several sectors and several members in this community. We have our president, Ricky Bussler. Over here, our vice president is Chief Corey Haynes. Our treasurer is Mary Daly, um, who is the business services representative. I apologize, Mary, for messing up your title. But as you can see, we have um, several sectors that make up our community. We have a media representative, youth serving organization, civic organization, healthcare professional, Chris Kutcha. He is the social worker at Lanfair High School who um, provides behavioral services to not only Lanfair High School, but to anyone under the age of 18 in our community. I encourage you to please use them. Um, Deb, Deb Lindsay, who you know is our social worker, Joe Jarbo, he's the Amores. We encourage to, we work with businesses, um, and I don't need to read the rest of them. The most important two that I want to point out, obviously, Quinn Wright, Councilor Quinn Wright, is representing the council on our board, and we also have our student, Jordan Aaron. We are in here a lot about we are a drug-free coalition. We are funded by the CDC, and we have uh, funding from the Alliance of Coalitions through Oakland Community Health Network. Um, with that, I want to tell you our most exciting update is that we have hired a project coordinator, um, Anthony Leverett, who is going to be the remainder of the presentation. Thank you. All right, so how are you guys doing, everybody? My name is Anthony Leverett, the new project coordinator here at the Madison Heights Community Coalition. And before I jump into the presentation of who we are, what it is that we've done, I want to highlight four words that are on this board. It says, with a focus on our youth. A lot of people have given us feedback because they don't know what it is that we necessarily do, but we have a focus on our youth. They are our motivation. As the next slide shall show, looks like it was a hang of this. 
things, right? They are our motivation. We do this for them. We do this to create a healthy future for them, to make sure that everything that they do from this moment forward allows them to have the future that they want. And I was fortunate enough, as I stepped into the position, to go to CAD Committee Year, our 20, 2022 CAD Committee Year, which we were able to bring Jordan, a student, to see what it is that Coalition Life is like. So Jordan, if you want to talk a little bit about it, and here's a little picture of Jordan too, you guys want to see it. So. <laughs> um, basically, it was a really fun experience. I got to meet a lot of people and make a lot of new friends who were like-minded. Um, and I guess while I was there, I learned a lot of things that I already knew, learned more about things that I already knew. And I also learned um, a few things, just in general, like about being a person, um, how to stop drugs in our city, um, and just deal with all types of uh, substance abuse issues in our city. Where was it? It was in <laughs> Orlando, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so yeah, so essentially, as he said, it was a great opportunity where 2,300 students from across the world, 22 countries were present, to come to this conference to learn about coalition life to talk about their stories of what drug and substance abuse is going on in their community. And we dive a little bit deeper into mental health as well, as it is a prominent subject that is being talked about and something that we decided to shift our focus on as well. But before we get into that, I want to talk about something that we started to take more seriously and Jordan, something that he started to point out, which was more of our community's issues. So our first thing that I would like to bring up is marijuana usage. We did surveys across Oakland County and across nine sides. Students who have used marijuana under 18 in Oakland County, it said 18% of students have used it. In comparison to Madison Heights, we are at an equal number. 18% of students under the age of 18 have used marijuana, according to our surveys that have been given to these schools. That's closely one in every five students. Now this is not to necessarily raise a red flag or to say that this is the biggest issue that we have. It's not, it's just, to let you guys know what issues that we are facing and something that we are doing or to allow you guys to see the things that we are kind of fighting against. So I want to move forward to talk about the things that we've done, our action plans. This is just a little list of things that we have done so far. I will get into detail later as we have something to show you, but something that we don't have is the School Diversion Program. The School Diversion Program is something that I'm looking to bring as I am the new project coordinator and kind of excited to come to schools about it, but it's to necessarily teach the students who have been suspended for marijuana usage, for alcohol, for any of those things, and I want to be able to at least teach them that and educate them of the importance of why they shouldn't be doing it. But before we get into that School Diversion Program, so I want to highlight some of the things that we've done and are looking forward to doing. A lockback. My third week here, I think, my third week here, I was able to go to the dispensaries here at Madison Heights to provide lock bags to the dispensaries, essentially, so they can give it to the customers. The point of these lock bags are so they can lock up the marijuana that they have. Not necessarily saying that it's a bad thing, please stop doing drugs, obviously people have their own preference, but to at least lock it up. Don't let it get into the hands of the kids. The next thing that we have, okay, I gotta get this quick. The next thing that we have is to clear the smoke campaign. It's essentially just to teach youth about what the harmful effects of marijuana usage are. We also have THC test strips, which we have a bag for mm -hmm. stuff. We have THC test strips that we've provided to schools and the community. So if they want to make sure that there's no marijuana usage being done, then you guys can test to make sure that it's okay. We have our weed can wait campaign. And this is a point that I'm going to bring up later on as we talk about alcohol, but we can wait. It's essentially what it says up there is just us teaching them the importance of why you guys should wait to use marijuana usage. Fun fact, 90% of the addictions are reported, 90% of people who reported that they have an addiction have used alcohol under the age of 18. But if you wait till 21, the numbers is only 10%, less than 10% of people who have waited until the age of 21 struggle with addiction. Sorry, uh, practices. We also have a deterrent, which is also in the kits that we will be handing out, but it's an eco-friendly system that we use to take prescription drugs and we are able to put it in there and that way it deactivates the chemicals that are in the drugs. So if you guys have any leftover prescription drugs, it can't get into the hands of kids. We also have our free walk-up Narcan training, so if you guys want to see us live and also want some gourmet hot dogs from our president, Rick Bustler, 
please come. It is August 29th, next Monday from 11.30 to 2 p.m. And we will be, it's five minutes, five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes, where you guys will learn how to use Narcan in the case of any sign of overdose. And get a free And a free hand, I guess. Um, but that's enough for the drugs. Another issue that I saw was alcohol. According to the YRBS survey, this, the numbers are a lot different. 29% of students under the age of 18 in Oakland County have said that they have had alcohol. Now looking at Madison Heights, it says 33% according to our YRBS survey and other surveys that we've also brought into schools as well. That's one in every three students. Now again, to go back onto the point that I made of the 90% of people who struggle with addiction who have consumed alcohol under the age of 18, if it's in a classroom full of 30, nine of those students can possibly suffer from addiction later on. But we have plans, we have motives, we have things that we can do to help prevent that as well, and things that we've already done. These are a couple of our campaigns, sticker campaigns, things that we are trying to promote. Our 21 to buy and not to supply. It's a sticker campaign, it's more so like a window seal that we just put into stores to at least let the stores know and the customers know that this is not okay. You are not here to supply alcohol to kids. It's, it's, you will get fined for it. It's something that we just want to make sure that we emphasize and allow people to know. We have our parents who lose the most host. Our parents who host lose the most. It's also just another thing that we want to implement to inform parents of if you host parties with alcohol, you can also get in trouble for it as well. We have a bus driving and drunk driving campaign, which is pretty much napkins that we bring into stores and bars and restaurants to allow people to know, please don't drive while you're drunk. And lastly, I think twice sticker campaign, which we have a whole team and committee of people, and I will be going out this week actually to go put these stickers on alcohol bottles and containers and cartons full of things that we can ensure that we allow people to know to think twice before you sell tickets. But as I've touched on before and as I stepped into this role and I asked a part of the community, what are some things that you guys feel like are issues? A lot of people brought up mental health. And honestly, I think that the idea of marijuana usage or alcohol usage, it stems from this. 68% of the students in Madison Heights said that they felt depressed in 2021. 28% of them felt like they had no one to talk to, and 16% said that they attempted suicide at least once. It's a hefty number. It is. It's an uncomfortable number for a lot of people. But we have things and programs to help have these uncomfortable conversations. There's a couple of other things that we have for Nude, our Youth Advisory Council, Coping Kids Mental Health First Aid, Magic Pope, Montana Institute, and the Safe Talk. Fortunately enough, I was so excited to hear about this program. I myself am going to go get a minister to learn how to be a trainer for Renewed. Renewed provides tools for dealing with stress, anxiety, and other difficult feelings. Broken up into four sessions, which we went into Wilkinson, I do believe, last year. They had the Renewed at Wilkinson in April. Thank you. Um, in April. And essentially, it's a four session program that allows people to talk about mindfulness, coping strategies how to do proper breathing, healthy relationships versus unhealthy relationships. And something that I was told by Ms. Patricia Perry herself is how to use social media in the right way. Uh, we also, which I thought was a great accomplishment, I was not a part of it, but I was so happy to hear about it. 750 coping kits were made. Every middle schooler in Madison Heights received one of these coping kits. And if you guys have a middle schooler who did not receive it, please ask us because all of these things that we mentioned, we have in our office, ready to give out, ready to serve the community, and ready to assure that we do our part to help. Also, last month, Kimberly and myself have gotten Youth Mental Health First Aid certified. So it was something pretty exciting. We sat through our little training and kind of just started to understand what the importance is of mental health and how to deal with it. We also have world-renowned Anthony Grappito coming to Lanford High School and soon to be Madison High School as well, too, to talk about the magic of hope, to inspire the students and the staff of how to understand mental wellness and what to do and how to do more things to help you with your coping skills, as well as the Montana Institute. The Montana Institute helps communities and organizations apply the positive community norms approach to prevention, manage change and foster transformation, and grow healthy norms and positive protective factors. It was so big that the people of the Alliance, the people who oversee our coalition, went to Montana itself 
to go get trained in this program, and they thought it was important to bring it back. And now it's something that we ourselves are bringing to the city of Madison Heights. Now I do believe that it's, oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, lastly, our last live event that I would love to invite you guys to. On September 8th, we have our Safe Talk training. Essentially, it's just to prepare you guys to understand what to do in situations where you guys are facing suicide or people who have thoughts of it and what to do in those situations and who to contact to get help. Now, I know this is the last slide that we have about mental health, really the last slide of this presentation, but to end the notes on mental health, I think it's something that's extremely important. As me, just a recent graduate from Wayne State, thank God I did it. But like, <laughs> as me, I, I struggled. You know, being a student, I felt like I had no one to talk to. And when I had the opportunity to step in with the coalition and see the, the things that they did and to realize what my story is, as I can go on to tell you about all the things that I probably shouldn't have been growing up. But I had people who cared. And I think for once, I found a job where I'm able to also be that person who cares for the kids that were once me, who are going to grow up and face the real world and may not know what to do, especially after the pandemic, so I'm honored. I'm glad to be a part of the coalition and be a part of Madison Heights as I will be moving here on Saturday. Mm -hmm. okay. And yes, the coalition. If you guys have any questions, anything, any materials that you guys want that we have mentioned, we're here. Phone call away, email. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no. I, that, that was it. I was concluding this. That's who we are. Right. So I was going to say that Kimberly knows, uh, I think it's about five, six years ago, we were the first city ban um, underage vaping mm -hmm. as a vape shop. Yeah. Yeah. So we did that about like five or six years yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah, we're the first city to ever do that. Oh, that's great. That, is, that was something that a lot of people brought up as well, too, as something like communities, coalitions across the world, they were like vaping, it was more of an issue than marijuana and alcohol. And honestly, I believe it. I see it everywhere, you know, especially like being a student myself. I saw it on campus, and it was something that I was just like, okay, I don't know when this became big, but it's definitely something that needs to be targeted as well. So yes, that's who we are. I don't know if there's any we have questions. We have made um, a folder for each one of you that has an example of all of the items that we presented in the presentation just so that you can later dissect it, have it in your hands, and if you have any questions or one of these programs implemented sooner, just let us know. Would you guys like these folders now? Would you like the folders now? Uh, you know, if you give them to me, that would be great. Okay. okay. Or actually, if you leave them with Adam. I'll leave them with Adam. Yeah, that would be great. Well, thank you. Right. Thank, thank you for you. your time today. Uh, thank, thank you so you much for coming out. out. Thank you for everything you uh, do. And Jordan, great job. Thank you. We expect great, great things from Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. We have meeting open to the public. This is the opportunity for the public to speak. We ask that you keep it to three minutes. Give your name, address, anything that identifies you in the city. And with that, over to the public. Hi, Martha Covert, uh, Twin Six Hundred Nine Edward. Um, I want to say, uh, Dave Soltis, thank you for the kind words. I saw that in the meeting, and I needed it that day. I saw it. Thank you very much. Um, Tomorrow is the first meeting for the Crime Commission where I will be the chairperson. Very very excited. We already have the speech coming up, well, a talk with uh, Attorney General Nessel for the scams. It's September 6th from 6 to 7 at the Adult Activity Center. Uh, we also have the chief working on a canine exhibit where we're going to bring in canines from different cities, hopefully on a day when you can bring your kids so the kids can see what's going on. We've already. Tomorrow's actually the first meeting that I'm going to be the chair, but we've already put this stuff in progress to get it done because we want to show that we want to bring our community and our police together. We don't want a lapse. So we're not trying to be stars or anything. I did make a joke about giving me a badge, but yeah, <laughs> that's not it. And Quinn, thank you for stepping up quick. When we were talking about getting an SL, Quinn emailed immediately, what can I do? That was very thoughtful, thank you. I just can't wait to get started on this. I think we're going to have a good time, but now the dreaded DTD. Okay, listen, listen. I, I, I know it was, for me, it was an inconvenience, but there are people that I know that couldn't use their oxygen, couldn't use their CPAPs, couldn't use the chairs that they get up from. Is there any way the city could work with DTE to get like some kind of grant so these people could get battery generators so that, God forbid, this happens again, 
they have a way to keep their quality of life. I might lose low speed for some, but their life. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else from the public want to speak? All right. Um, <clears throat> so I was going to uh, save this for closing comments, but since you um, said this, I'm going to make a statement. This is coming from me. I'm going to take a guess that the bulk of council, if not everyone, is going to agree with this. And I just want everyone to know that um, council and staff are very, very aware of the DTE outages. Um, some are affected, some are not. Um, but basically, I, this is how I've spent the last weekend. Like just a lot of I mean, talking to people. And unfortunately, I there's not very much that I can do other than listen to the stories and pass them along to staff who is going to pass them along to DTE because um, it's true. You know, we live in Michigan, it's 2022, and we expect to have daily access to reliable electricity. That doesn't sound unreasonable to me. And without giving it a lot of thought, most of us just turn on the light, and we open the fridge, and we turn on our air conditioner, or our stove, or our computer. Um, and every so often the power goes out, and it's, it's annoying. It's, eh, it's a nuisance. Um, we might have to throw it a bit of food. Again, it's annoying, it's a nuisance, it might cost us a bit of money, but we deal with it. Um, but now, people are constantly losing their power uh, five times over a period of three days, I think is what I heard from somebody. Um, and so people are throwing out hundreds of dollars of groceries. They have to find alternative places to work because um, you know, they can't work from home if they're supposed to work from home and they don't have power. It's taking a toll financially and it's taking a toll mentally. And it is definitely not just an annoyance. So this is becoming a health hazard. It's becoming a big concern. And then we also have to remember that it's not just our groceries and our lights. We have people who rely on electricity because they have to have uh, refrigeration for life-saving medicines, for breast milk. They need to have electricity so that they can power oxygen machines. A lot of people have the sleep machines at night that help them breathe. They, something needs to be done and DTE saying here's $25 yeah that's fine when it's a bit of an annoyance and I've lost power for an hour and I have to reset my clocks but that is not enough to actually cover anything we have real people who have real lives who need their power so I want everyone to know that we are very aware of this and that um, staff is looking into it they you know um, staff is having a meeting with DTE this week to address this um, you are welcome to reach out to us with your concerns, but I mean, we know and we're doing what we can. So thank you for bringing that up and that now cut my closing comments. Off. All right, um, it's very frustrating. It's very scary for a lot of people. Next up, we have communications. Uh, we've got the resignation from the Human Relations and Equity Commission and the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board for Sandra Quackenbush. Uh, can I get a motion to approve, please? Your Honor. Yes. I move that we accept the resignation of Sandra Quackenbush from those two boards and declare her seats vacant and issue the appropriate uh, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Is there support? Your Honor. Yep. Support. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Your Honor. I'm just going to say Sandra Quackenbush has been an amazing partner to us on council and, and both the boards that she serves on and pretty much anywhere else that folks uh, need, a, need a help they can, she was there. She was always helping out with um, various projects and saying, hey, what else can I do? Can I bring this? Can I help with that? And um, she will be missed. She's moving out of the city, so we are going to miss her very much. So thank you, Sandra. All right, thank you. Any other comments? Your Honor, yep. I too would just like to say sincerely, um, I'm going to miss working with her and, and what she brings to the, the table because um, she's one of the people I think, and this is not just disrespect anybody, she did it for the right reasons when she offered to help. There was no other purpose than to sincerely help and be a resource, and that's greatly appreciated, and uh, particularly in a time we need it. All right, thank you. Any other discussion, comments? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against, say no. <clears throat> Motion carries. Uh, the seat is now vacant. Next up, we have reports. First one is the consent agenda policy. At the request of Mayor Grafstein, a consent agenda policy is being presented for City Council's consideration. <clears throat> if implemented, this policy would allow for the approval of routine items in a group 
However, any member of council or the public could request that an item be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda for discussion. No motion would be required. Other policy highlights include that no purchases or contracts may be included in the consent agenda that are above $50,000 or if a bidder is not the lowest responsible or competent bidder. Motions to approve consent agendas will not include any reading of uh, the included items like this and no separate discussion will take place on these items. However, backup information will be included in the public packet. All right, thank you, Ken. Uh, what is the motion to council? Here. I move that council approves the consent agenda policy effective for the city council meeting of September 12th, 2022. All right. Thank you. Is there support? Yeah. Yep. That's support. Thank you. A motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? So oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll just say that um, uh, for the public, uh, the understanding of consent agendas. Uh, Many of you have sat through long meetings where we read through very lengthy um, things and it's very repetitive and this is going to help us get through some of those things faster that are, that are just routine things that don't need a lot of discussion. At any time, if any council member says, you know what, we need to have a conversation about this or anybody in the public says, hey, we want to hear a conversation about this. Those things pulled out immediately and we have that conversation. It is does not remove the ability for anything to be heard about or talked about. It's all still out here, all still available to the public. It just takes away some of the routine monotony of some of these longer um, meetings. So I'm all for it. <laughs> so ju just to clarify, um, I'll, I'll give an example. Um, one of the biggest things that we do that we really could use a consent agenda for is the meeting minutes. So um, we did have a situation though, a couple of meetings ago, where the clerk said there was, a, there was a small error in the meeting minutes, and so we need to make that change. So if we were using a consent agenda, I would say something like, okay, so we have you know items one to 10. Does everyone agree that we should do this? And the clerk could actually say, item eight, the meeting uh, minutes, we need to pull that. Okay, we will. And then we make the change, and then we, we have regular discussion, just like we do now for everything. Um, so if there's anything, and, and it could be something more, you know, I don't want to say important, but something else where uh, someone says, you know, I plan on agreeing with all of this, but I'd like to have a bit more discussion, get a bit more clarity about something. Can you pull item five? And we can. We can do that. So then I'll just say, okay, so on the consensus agenda, we have items one to 10, but we're gonna pull items five and eight. Is there anything else we need to pull? No, all right, everyone who wants to approve all the other ones, approve. Now let's talk about item five, item eight, regular, any discussion, let's, let's all vote. And it still could be a unanimous yes, but whoever wanted to pull that item could do it. So, um, so just, you know, I know that the one concern that um, I was hearing from people about this was, well, it looks like we're hiding things. We're not hiding everything. And you are welcome to read this and you are welcome to ask questions. Um, and if there's something that we need to pull to have further discussion about, we will. But for a lot of the routine items, it just helps us move along. So that's it, I just wanted to clarify that. Um, there's no more discussion. To to piggyback, I, I was I was prepared to to vote no on the original policy, and when we first discussed this, probably I don't know five years ago at this point. I, I brought it up just before COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I yeah. It, this is this is multiple times it's been uh, it's been brought up, and Mayor Grafstein has been pushing this, and I had already I had always been against it because our meetings aren't typically that long. We have an occasional long meeting. Tonight should be a little longer because we got boards and commissions. Uh, that would be in the consent agenda anyway. Um, but things things like uh, some of the pieces of this policy, though, I think make it easy for me to vote yes. To add anything to the agenda, it takes two members of council. To, to talk about something on the consent agenda, any one of us can do it. And so that makes it really easy for me because there's no barrier to discussion. Whereas if you had to have two members of council 
make the motion and a second and a four member vote to discuss something like some cities do with consent agendas that would be a problem for me and also having this limit where anything <coughs> above 50,000 or anything where we're choosing a bidder that's not necessarily the lowest in those cases automatically cannot be on the consent agenda so we can very clearly show that yeah there's nothing being hidden it's just a way for us to move through some of the monotony of approving minutes as printed and some of the lower cost purchases that uh, nobody would have issue with uh, and it just saves a little bit of time for the public coming in. All right, any other comments? Your Honor, I just wanted to add. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. We're just going to keep this thing going. Um, being new to City Council, I don't always catch everything. And so my concern was that things would slip through the cracks for like new people like myself. Not Toy. Toy's on top of everything. So, um, but for myself, I am. Um, I was, I was trying to be nice, trying to be nice. <laughs> um, but the thing that I, I just confirmed is just having the ability at the say now I wouldn't do this but say at the last minute you caught something having the ability to then say uh, I'd like to pull that from the consent agenda is an opportunity and that's what's important to me because try as hard as we might things do slip through the cracks and having the opportunity to say actually you know what I'd like to discuss or um, get further clarification is important so I just want to add something very briefly. A lot of communities have this type of a, a setup with a consent agenda, and I've seen it work relatively well. So if there's any issue that a council person wants to talk about, uh, that he or she can simply request that it be removed from the consent agenda. So it's, I've seen it work very well. And if we end up in a situation where most of the time, everything or most of the things are being pulled from the consent agenda we're going to stop it you know it, it's you know if we if it's not saving us time and it's just creating more bureaucracy we're not we're not going to do it well, that's all that's all that's that's <laughs> so with that uh seeing no more discussion all in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. those against say no motion carries thank you next up from dps we have the special event the cyclocross race Morning Cranks has approached the DPS requesting the use of Civic Center Park for a cyclocross bike event over the weekend of September the 29th through October 1st. As this is a special use under the Pavilion and Park Rental Guidelines, the Park Use Agreement requires the approval of City Council. Staff recommends that Council approve the event subject to compliance with the Policy on Uniform Insurance Requirements for Special Events and authorize the Mayor and City Clerk to sign the Park Use Agreement on behalf of the City and David, representing Morning Cranks, is here with us today if you have any questions or want to hear more about it. <coughs> All right, uh, so what is the wish of Council? Your Honor? Yes. I move that we approve this event subject to its compliance with our Policy on Uniform Insurance Requirements. Uh, and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the agreement on behalf of the city. Thank you. Is there support? Yeah. All support. Thank you. Um, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All right. Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. <laughs> all right. Uh, and next up, um, and this is probably going to take up the bulk of our meeting, it is the council, um, council is appointing the board and commission members. So a few years ago, we changed the way that we did this. Um, we were just every other meeting, someone had left the board, there was a vacancy, we were making appointments. So a few years ago, we made changes. So February and August are the two times a year that we do that. Um, and generally what we do is we go through this in alphabetical order with the council representative making the appointments um, other than the few that are mayor's appointments. So unless there is a reason to not do that, I'm going to start with the Active Adult Center Advisory Board. Your Honor, I'd like to make, and correct me if I'm using um, the wrong way, I'd like to uh, nominate Margaret I'd like to make a motion to move forward with Margaret uh, Topping and Barbara Shimura to the Adult Active okay. Advisory Board. Okay, so there's one spot. Okay. Oh, sorry. So um, it looks. <clears throat> I read that wrong. So. It's okay. So there is one spot. It looks like Margaret Topping is currently on the oh, board, and she's willing to 
Um, so you have the choice of appointing her for doing it, basically, but reappointing her or appointing um, the other person. I'm so sorry, I read that wrong. Yeah. Um, and then I'd like to make the motion to appoint Margaret Topping willing to a second term. Expiring August yes. 2025. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, is there support? Your Honor, I'll support. Your motion has been made, seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. Uh, next up, we have the Arts Board. Your Honor, uh, I move that we appoint uh, Jennifer Nagel and Anna Bassler to the uh, the main terms that expire 831-25. Uh, Jennifer Zmarzak to the term that expires 831-2023. And Jason Theodora, Jillian Sweet, and Amy Lewis to the alternate terms that expire 831-23 and 831-24 respectively. Thank you. Is there support? Your Honor. All support. Okay, motion has been made. Seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. Congratulations to everyone who was appointed. Uh, next up is the Construction Board of Appeals. Um, so this one does not have a council representative. Um, so if I can get a motion to approve Brad Purple from Milton Browse to the term expiring August 2024. Your Honor. Yes. So moved. Thank you. Is there support? Support, Your Honor. Thank you. Motion has been made. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. Uh, next up is Crime Commission. This is actually a mayor appointment and Sean Fleming, who is a representative, um, asked that, uh, and I'm going to uh, make this appointment, but asked that <coughs> Alexandra Equinto um, has the appointment for this as she has a background uh, in law enforcement. So uh, I agree with uh, Councilman Fleming that that would be a good fit for Crime Commission. Um, so she is actually, well, I'm doing this backwards. She is going to be going to the alternate position, and I'm going to nominate Colleen Monaghan, who is in the alternate, to the uh, regular. I believe it's, no, 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 it's not an MPC. It's just the alternate seat. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, her I don't think that her turn is expiring until next year. Okay, but so why is that there? Because she could have been moved up to uh, an alternate for a longer period if you wanted to. I just, oh, I just okay. All right. Thank you. Sorry. We, we, just to give clarification, we Sorry. all get spreadsheets that have everything on here, but sometimes it's a bit difficult yeah. to read. Okay. Thank you. I was trying to figure out my call. So I take that back. So I am going to go with Alexandra Coito um, for the term expiring August 2024. Can someone uh, make that motion, please? Your Honor. Yes. Uh, I move that we confirm the mayor's appointment. Thank you. Uh, is there support? Your Honor. Support. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All right. Sorry about that. So um, this is one of those roles where uh, she's got the law enforcement background, and so I felt that she was a better candidate. Um, you know, Councilman Fleming asked me to do this, and I said, yep, that was fine. I agree with him on that. We're not touching calling. So all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. Then uh, next up is elected officials' compensation. So um, there is one spot there. We have two applicants. And we have two applicants. Is this, this isn't the mayor's appointment. No, okay. So this is not a mayor's appointment. Um, if someone wants to make a motion, but I have my own thoughts on this if anyone wants to know. <laughs> so motion for council. Uh, yeah, please. Just so I make a motion. I, well, there's only one person who can be appointed. Just pick one. Oh. So I, I, um, I'm not set up with a new system, and I didn't get a list like you have. You ever got one? Oh, okay. So. <laughs> and because power outages and low water pressure aren't enough, we also have the new system. <laughs> Your Honor, you, you said you had some thoughts. Um, I think that uh, Jennifer Zamarzlik uh, would be a good candidate for this. She's been very active with the DEA. Um, so. And that was who? Jennifer Zamarzlik. Uh, 
Jennifer Zamora's life. Your, Your Honor, yes, please. I, I would make that motion that we appoint uh, Jennifer Zamora's life to the seat on the Elected Officials Compensation Commission expiring 8-31-2029. Thank you. Is there support? Your Honor. Yes. Support. Thank you. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Just have a question. Sure. I mean, just given the, the list of candidates, should we uh, consider if people apply for multiple commissions or no? I mean, like, we have some people only apply for one and some not, didn't apply for, did, for multiple. So um, I guess I'm just asking to take that into consideration. This, this is a board that meets once every two years. Okay. So if someone wants to be really active in the city, this is not one of the active boards. Um, the people who are on there now, I feel like everybody who's on there, most of the people who are on there now are already on other boards. And so this is sort of a, an extra that they do. So you can look to see who else is on there. Your Honor. Yes. If I may, I, I think it also cuts cuts the other way as well. Uh, if somebody has a great track record of serving on multiple boards, for a board like this that is specifically geared towards a singular issue, uh, it definitely helps if there's council awareness in, in the person as well. Uh, because it's not like, like arts board, I appoint people that have arts experience. I tech, it's people with technology experience. We're trying to find people with planning experience for planning commission. Uh, this is more just citizen advisory, so you know I I think if there if it's not a scheduling conflict, I would defer to somebody that has served personally in other boards because then at least we know their activity level and their interest in the city too. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? All right. Seeing none. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. Uh, next up is the Environmental Citizens Commission. Your Honor, um, I move that we appoint Anthony Klopati uh, to the regular term ending on um, February 28th, 2024. All right, thank you. Is there support? Support. Your Honor, sorry. Support. Thank you. Thank you. Um, motion has been made. Is there any discussion? All right, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. Next up, the Historical Commission. Your Honor. Yes. Uh, I move that we appoint uh, Nicholas Cobb and Kevin Wright to uh, terms on the Historical Commission. Uh, Kevin Wright to the term that expires 228-24, and Nicholas Cobb to the uh, seat that expires 228-23. Right, thank you. Is there support? Your Honor. Yes. Support. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. Uh, next up, we have the Human Relations and Equity Commission. Your Honor. Yes. I move that uh, we appoint Paige Szymanski and Amy Pugh to the terms um, ending in um, 831-24, to the regular terms, and uh, Marie Urban. Urban and Emily Reeds to the regular terms ending 831-23. That's all I'd like to appoint. All right. Um, uh, can I get a support? Your Honor. Yes. Support. support. All right. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All right. Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. And those appointments have been made. Uh, next up is the Library Advisory Board. Your Honor, yes. I move to maintain the seats for Deborah Shepard, Christina Mitzer, and Jeffrey Scott to the terms ending for Deborah and Christina 831-24, Jeffrey Scott for the term ending 831-23. I'd like to move um, William Muir to the term ending 831-24. And Angela Freeman to the regular term ending 831-24. Cassie Jackson and um, uh, just Amanda May 
to the terms in the 831-23 with Cassie Jackson being the alternate. All right, thank you. Uh, is there support? There are Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Your, your Honor, yes. uh, Councilor Robert, would you have to abstain from this motion? Oh, oh yes, you would. So, yeah, you would. I'm sorry, I do yeah. have to abstain. Your, your Honor, I'll, I'll second. All right, thank you. Um, is there any discussion? Just um, your Honor, I'm abstaining yes. because <laughs> my mother is one of the people being appointed. <laughs> thank you for the clarification. So just, just, just to clarify for everybody, um, Family members of council are not allowed to be appointed or allowed to come onto the boards unless they were already on the boards. So when Councilor Rohrbach uh, came onto council, her mother was already on the board. So that's fine. We're not kicking her off of the board, but Council Rohrbach was not allowed to vote. Yes. So, um, I was just impressed with the, the clarity that's been shown. <laughs> Council <laughs> that Eric did that entire motion. That was a that was a rough one. Good she, job. She should make all the decisions at this point. Okay, so, uh, but it has been made and seconded. Um, Council Rohrbach will be abstaining from this. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. Next up is Parks and Recreation. This is also, um, this is also a mayor's appointment. So, um, this is one where Sandra, Sandra Quackenbush has just resigned so there is that as a vacancy and I believe that's the only vacancy it's this is just getting a bit confusing and then yeah I think that's okay two, two alternates so the two alternates but there doesn't seem to be a, no, there's a vacant seat expired in 24 well two and then there's one vacancy that expires in 24 and then because of her seat was supposed to be renewed and she not, she's not going to be, oh no, I'm sorry, it expires in 23. Yeah. So one okay. vacancy in 23 and one vacancy in 24. Okay. Your Honor. Yes. It, it looks to me like if we appoint one of the alternates to that main seat, then we would fill the alternate seat. But there's okay. only one seat. Yeah. No, there's no, two. There should be two. Yeah, I, I, I got so, it. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I understand. I got it. I got it. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, this is where it gets a bit confusing and then when we move an alternate into um, a regular seat, then the alternate seat becomes vacant, but then you don't see it. And when we have someone who resigns at this meeting, we don't see it. So there are two regular seats, and they're all two um, our alternates. So I'm actually going to appoint um, Christopher Mullencup to the term, the regular term, ending in February 2024. Um, and then, and I'm going to start with that one. So if I can get uh, someone to uh, approve my appointment, please. Your Honor. Yes. I move that we approve the mayor's appointment. All right. Thank you. Is there support? Yeah. Yes. There's support. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Um, just to clarify, uh, a lot of times, not always, but we, we move the alternate up into the regular position. In this case, Chris Mullencup, um, has been very active with a lot of parks related uh, projects. Um, he's been very active with the men's club, um, doing a lot of different things. And so I know already that he will be active on this board. And so I am jumping him over because of that. Um, there's any other discussion? Or? Your Honor, yes. uh, just there's a, there's a lot of great candidates here. Um, I, I will support the mayor's appointment. But I'm wondering if it would be worth adding an alternate to this board at a later date, because there are some really strong people that have applied. Okay, that, that's fine. I just wanted to sort of one. Yeah, one at, a, time. at a yep. future date, I'm just throwing that out as. Sure. It would take two ordinance votes in order to change the Parks and Rec one to another alternate. Mm -hmm. uh, we couldn't do it by resolution, but uh, a lot of the names on this list are really active and care a lot about our parks. So okay. maybe we'd get one more in. Okay. Um, is there any other discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those can't say no. All right, uh, Chris Mullencup has been appointed to the term uh, ending February 24. And then I would like to move one of the alternates up. And Councilor Rohrbach, um, Councilwoman Aaron, you know, do either of you I know that Vita Palazzolo has been very active with the arts board. 
Um, and I know that when I made the appointment with Lisa Wright, somebody I don't know, she had been interested in bringing festivals and doing things. So if either of you want to weigh in, or if you would prefer that I just leave it as is and leave them as alternates. I, you're the ones who have hands-on experience on this. Your Honor. Yes. Um, Lisa Wright is pretty new okay. to the to the Parks and Rec Board, so she hasn't had much time to okay. uh, get to jump in to sure. anything at sure. this point. So I can't. Um, you know, Vita has done uh, quite a bit of work. Um, I think Lisa is enthusiastic and wants to participate. There just hasn't been uh, many meetings for her to jump into yet. So okay, we're, um, I, I would support either one going into the regular term. Okay, well, um, so as the representative, would you like me to make an appointment or would you like me to just leave it vacant for now? Are you meeting quorum? We don't always have to make the appointment. No, I think we should make the appointments for okay. sure. Um, I don't necessarily think we should make new alternate seats and things like that just because we do have sometimes uh, quite a bit of trouble getting enough people in the room at the same time to make the quorum. Okay. Um, but so I do want to see, and that's been historically, so sure. I, I, I would like to see um, these people coming back on. So um, at Lisa's term does not end until 2024 already. So if we keep her as an alternate, um, as where she is now, um, and uh, move beat up to a uh, regular term ending okay. in 23 to take Sandra's place and then um, move a, a third person um, and I would suggest Liza Lee but it's up to you obviously for the um, second alternate seat. All right so I would like you to make the motion to appoint Vita Palazzolo to the regular term ending February 2023 and appoint Eliza Lee to the alternate role. 2023. 2023. 2023 is. Wow. Uh, February 2023. Um, can I get a motion to make those appointments? Mayor's appointments. Yeah. I move that council uh, concurs with the mayor's appointment. All right, thank you. Is there support? Your Honor, support. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against, say no. The motion carries. Um, and then next up, we have Planning Commission. This is also a mayor's appointment. Um, so we've got two members who are up for renewal at this point. Uh, one of them has resigned and at this point I am not going to fill their spot, but I am going to ask for um, a motion from council to reappoint Melissa Kaldassi uh, for a term expiring August 2025. Your Honor. Yes. So moved. Thank you. For support? Your Honor. Yes. Support. Thank you. A motion has been made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. And we are done with council appointments. Oh, no, no, no. 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 Oh. oh, I didn't print that page. <laughs> 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 so I uh, print that page. This uh, is the problem with paper. Your, your Honor. Yes, please. Uh, I, I move that we reappoint uh, Anthony Roberts to the police and fire retirement system. Uh, the term that expires 831 2026. All right. Thank you. Is there support? Your Honor. Yes. Support. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. And then last up, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Your Honor. Yes. I move that we move Dale Long, Low Ranger to the term ending 228-25. All right. Thank you. Is there support? Your Honor. Yes. Support. Thank you. Motion has been made. Seconded. Is there any discussion? What's his last name? Lone Ranger. 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 All right. Is there any, uh, <laughs> sorry, was there support for that? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? Um, seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. And now we are done. All important appointments. Sorry, I didn't print up the last page. Um, 
All right, next up we have the bid awards purchases uh, from the city manager. We have the change order for the basement water removal and treatment at 945 East 10 Mile Road. As a result of heavy rains, the pit located at the former 945 East 10 Mile Road reached capacity. Therefore, Adams Group was required to obtain frack tanks and dispose of 63,000 gallons of liquid waste. Um, this included the required labor, equipment, PPE, tools, and supplies to perform this scope of work. The amount of the additional work is $93,057.40. This work plan was reviewed by equal representatives and approved, and also their consultant from Wood Consulting. Um, this cost would be paid by the city, but would be reimbursed through a grant from the state of Michigan at 100%. Therefore, staff and I recommend the city council approve the work plan change with an additional fee of $93,057.40 for the Adams Group for basement water removal and treatment at 945 East 10 Mile Road. Thank you. Your Honor? Yes. I make a motion that we approve the work plan to change the change order for $93,057.40 for the Adams Group to complete the basement water removal and treatment at 945 East 10 Mile Road. All right, thank you. Is there support? Your Honor. Yes, no support. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Say no. Uh, next up, DPS, we have the scheduled placement of forklift number 320. The fiscal year 2023 budget includes a carry forward to replace this forklift 320. It's a 1997 Clark lift. It's 25 years old. It's in poor shape and uh, replacement parts have become very difficult to obtain. Staff called multiple vendors and did demonstrations on three different vendors. It's worth noting that due to the nature of the market, there were multiple calls to vendors that they were unwilling to bring a demo model to the DPS. Staff found that Toyota was a clear leader in all areas and determined that it was the best value for the money. However, Toyota sells on a geographic dealer arrangement, meaning there's only one sole source that would service Madison Heights. This is Bell Forklift of Clinton Township. Um, the delivery of this machine, if approved at this meeting, would be scheduled not until December 2023. Staff requests that Council consider two motions to re this related purchase. First, to approve the budget amendment for $9,001 to account 592-901-982-0000, and that would take a vote of five members of council. All right, what is the wish of council? Your Honor. Yes. I move that council approves the budget amendment of $9,001 to account 592-901-982-0000. Okay, is there support? Your Honor. Yes. Support. The okay, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Okay. Your Honor, I would ask for a roll call on this because it requires five members. Okay. Um, we can do that. We normally don't do that. Uh, is there any discussion? Your Honor. Yes. Can I ask the uh, um, question with the DPS director. So the forklift, so my buddy, his dad was a forklift uh, driver or, or operator. The operator. And so it's a little more complicated than just people think, isn't it? I mean, the forklift? <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah, it's, it's not an easy uh, piece of machine to operate. Uh, our entire staff, including myself, are all trained and certified to operate the forklift before we can even get on them and use them. I saw that TikTok where the whole thing just. Yeah. Over. yeah, that's why we do the training. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. Okay. I think, is there any other discussion? All right, seeing none, uh, just a reminder that we need to have a vote of five to pass this. Um, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Um, aye. All against, say no. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you. And then the second part. There's a second motion to approve the purchase of one Toyota Model 48FGU30 lift truck from Bell Forklift of Clinton Township, Michigan, in the amount of $49,001 under the sole source provision of the city's purchasing ordinance. All right. Uh, can I get a motion from council, please? Your Honor. Yes. 
where the council approves the purchase of one Toyota Model 48 FGU30 lift truck from the Bell Four Lift Inc. of Clinton Township is quoted in the amount of $49,001 under the sole source provision of the city purchasing ordinance. All right, thank you. Is there support? <laughs> yeah. Support. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries six zero. Thank you. And then last up, we have from DPS the schedule for placement of the street sweepers. No, four. The fiscal year 2023 budget includes the final phase funding for the scheduled replacement of the street sweeper. The current sweep, street sweeper is a 2012 Elgin Whirlwind on an auto car chassis. Although Elgin has been a tried and true performer for the DPS for many years, the staff routinely investigates other offerings on the market as part of the purchasing process. This allows us to determine the best option for the operations, the value of the money, and in this case, to investigate the technical advancements in street sweepers over the last five years. Several different street sweepers were delivered and utilized by staff, representing different makes and models and different types of machines. Um, of the demonstrated machines, the Butcher City Cat 5006 performed the best due to its ease of use, the high quality of debris pickup, and the overall cleaning. The overall construction and the ease of maintenance and repair also made Butcher City Cat the preferred machine. Additionally, it has a lead time of only one month as opposed to 18 to 24 months for the other quoted offerings. The Butcher City Cat is available through CoPro Plus Cooperative Bid through the MyTech Company or MTech Company. MTech is a vendor whom we have had prior experience with and have been very pleased with their overall performance and product support. The price of the sweeper is $258,190 <coughs> as quoted. Staff recommends that Council award the purchase of one Butcher City Cat 5006 to MTech of Cleveland, Ohio for the total purchase price of $258,190 under the Wayne County RESA CoPro Plus contract. Funding is budgeted and available. All right, thank you. What is the wish of Council? Your Honor. Yes. I move that we award the purchase of one Butcher City Cat 5006, which awesome name by the way, uh, to MTech of Cleveland for a total purchase price of $258,190 under the Wayne County RESA CoPro Plus contract. All right, thank you. Is there support? Your yeah. Honor. Yeah. Councilor, no support. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Your Honor. Yes. I just want to put in a formal request that as we test this heavy machinery, members of council be invited. Here, here. Just throwing that out there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Public media to watch as well. Is there any other discussion? Your Honor, uh, all joking aside, DPS director, can you please? So uh, I'm out riding my bike and I see that a lot. Um, help me understand how it's worth a quarter of a million dollars. There, what does it actually do? It doesn't pick up the leaves. That's different, right? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, yes and no. Um, as far as the our leaf collection operation, um, we use three different methods of, of picking up leaves. We have a, um, a leaf claw crew that goes out, and that's the machine on the front end loader that picks leaves up in bulk. We have the leaf, leaf vag systems they go pick up and they're a little bit more detailed. And then the sweeper comes by in roughly either early in the season, the very tail end of the season, does the very fine cleanup, a detailed cleanup at the end of the, of the leaf season. The, leaf, the sweepers are, are very technical pieces of equipment. Uh, the Elgins that we have now have upper, they have the engine motors and then the upper vacuum motors that operate. That's where we're experiencing a lot of the problems with the Elgins, uh, the whirlwind and the crosswinds. Now they are very finicky pieces of equipment. They apply water, uh, they sweep the streets, they pick up all the debris and the roads, the fine debris. Um, a lot of that, as it's mixed with water, gets gummed up into the system. So for a sweeper to make 10 years or, or last for 10 years, is which this replacement is, is I think remarkable and a testament to our motor pool division for keeping those uh, equipment on the road. Uh, the same thing goes with the new sweepers. Uh, the, the, the life expectancy is right around seven years for a sweeper and for us to get it uh, and we anticipate this new sweeper, the City Cat, to last seven to ten years for us. 
So you're saying that if we didn't have it, it would be noticeable, very noticeable on the streets? Yes. Yes. Um, Excluding the leaves. I, I think that the, the city of Madison Heights has done a remarkable job of keeping our, our streets, both the major roads and the residential roads, um, very clean. Right. I'm just asking about this one particular expensive item, that's all. Say that, I'm sorry? I, I'm just, I, I understand you, take, you guys do a fantastic job. It's just this one, when I see the sweeper, I don't you know, if, I look behind it and I, yeah, I don't know. If, if we did not have a new sweeper, if we did not purchase a new sweeper, the, I, I, the how do I say this? The amount of times, the frequency, the, the frequency that the city DPS would be on residential roads would be noticeable. If we only had one sweeper in the city, trying to maintain the entire city, it would be noticeable, noticeable absence of the sweeping, the street sweeping, both on major roads and residential roads. We routinely put out and we try to hit every residential road through the summer twice a month. Uh, and we've been pretty pretty good about maintaining that. Uh, and then also sweeping the major roads. Mm -hmm. So for to take one sweeper out of the mix and the operation, it would be, I, I think, very a significant uh, residents and patrons of the city would notice it drastically. And does it also help uh, from the uh, drains getting all clogged up? I, oh, certainly. Certainly. In the, in the city, we have... Um, uh, restricted drain covers, and that's to slow the introduction of storm water into the uh, into the catch basins and the storm system. With the restricted uh, the hole restrictions that are in the covers of the of the catch basins, they get gummed up with leaves, debris, uh, people who mow their lawns and just throw the grass and cl grass clippings into the road. They clog up those smaller holes um, routinely. So to have our street sweepers and the benefit of having our street sweepers uh, out in front of houses uh, every other week does a better job of removing that debris from those restrictions. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the council? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Almas. That. Next up, we have the uh, minutes from the last meeting on the 8th. Can I get a motion from Council to approve? Yeah. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from August 8th. Thank you. Is there support? Yeah. Yes. Support. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Say no. Thank you. And with that, I invite closing comments, starting with Council Thank you, Yarn. I want to first say I am so proud of my little boy. <laughs> I don't know if you all know this, but that little cute little boy was my son. Um, well, Jordan, I mean, well, yeah, he's, he's taller than I am. But Jordan was really excited and I, about going to CACA mid-year conference, and he called and yelled at me because I always tell him people see you before they hear you. So you have to make certain that you dress the part because no matter what you look like, if you're not dressed properly, people are not going to pay you any attention. So I packed him four suits. He had suits and ties and everything. He called me <clears throat> the next day, the first night, he said, Mom, you overdressed me. <laughs> Everybody has on basketball shorts and t-shirts. I said, well, you have some in your luggage. You wear that. So, but I was really proud that he went there and he learned. And when Ms. Heisler first came to me, well, actually, she went to Jordan first and told Jordan about this wonderful event. And he come up and tell me, and she says, oh, my gosh, I keep forgetting that he's only 13. And he needs your permission. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and she mentioned that he was going to have an adult chaperone. I was really skeptical about sending my child to another state with a person whom I had never met. And Anthony, we met over at Madhouse, and I was so impressed with that young man and the, his goal and his passion that he had for our city and for our coalition, and he's not even a resident. 
Yeah, he has mm -hmm. so much, so many ideas embedded in his head about what he wants to do for the city of Madison Heights and how he wants the coalition to go in the direction. His passion for the youth is phenomenal. And I trust him to take my child, I don't know how far Florida is, what, like 900 miles? And I didn't talk to my little boy, or big boy, I gotta stop saying that, but I didn't talk to my son pretty much for five days because he was so involved in what he was learning in the mid-year as well as being in the hands of Mr. LaVert. So thank you, Anthony, for caring for Jordan the way that you did. I appreciate you and you're welcome to the barbecue. <laughs> uh, secondly, I, um, being that I'm new to council, I'm not really sure how we go about removing a meeting from our schedule, but I was looking at the calendar for next month, and I noticed that Rosh Hashanah, which is a Jewish holiday, it begins on September 25th through the 27th, and we have a meeting scheduled on the 26th. So I would like for us to take into consideration if we can cancel that meeting and honor our Jewish members of council, because I'm sure that they will not be here um, for that meeting. I, I do know and I'm quite certain that the HREC is, is working on plans to celebrate this holiday and you know to respect our Jewish community. So I really would like to see how we can go about doing that. If we could possibly put it on our agenda for our September 12th meeting and vote on it. I'm, like I said, I'm new, I don't know, but I do know that Christmas, the Christmas holiday, that meeting is removed in December. So we only have that one meeting in December. So if we can do the same for this special holiday for them. And that's all I have, y'all. Thank you. Um, I guess before I move to Mr. Was, uh, Mr. Sherman, if council wishes to uh, cancel the meeting, do we need to do anything? You, to you vote? I was involved when we changed the charter uh, from two meetings in December to one meeting in December, and it was changed by way of charter. You would not be able to cancel the meeting because our charter requires two meetings, but we could reschedule the meeting to a different day. So that's something that we could do. We could think about. I'll get back to council on, on how to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Bliss, what are you Yeah, Your Honor, uh, I, I agree. Councilman Mayor makes a, a really great point. And I think in some of the months where business is light, like we've had some meetings that were like 27 minutes. And so <laughs> you, you put a couple of those together, and it's probably easier for our staff to be at one meeting in those months as opposed to having to come to multiple. Uh, and that's not even taking into account the desire to observe holidays. And the, there are multiple other holidays with multiple other religions that our general public couldn't even attend if we have a meeting during those days. And so uh, equally, it might, I know we've talked in the past about uh, whether or not to have the, the charter amendment review. Uh, that might be another thing, giving us some more flexibility as council. Uh, maybe it's X amount of meetings in a year as scheduled or so, some sort of a way for us to have some flexibility there, I would agree with. Uh, but even for this one, I mean, technically, if, if a quorum isn't there, a meeting doesn't happen. So there is some flexibility there as well. Uh, but I think it'd be pretty easy for us to move it to just a different day, either that week or the week after. Um, and another note, uh, not incredibly fun. Um, I am so incredibly disappointed with DTE. Uh, Mayor Grassley brought it up earlier. About six years ago, we brought them in front of this council, and they had mentioned all sorts of plans. We, you know, we drilled them for like an hour. Uh, I attended a follow-up meeting uh, in place of Mayor Hartwell at the time where they once again doubled down on all of the investments that they were going to make. <clears throat> As I understand it, they never made an investment in the, into the substation that failed. Yeah. And I mean, that was, that was like six years ago. Um, 
I don't know what our mechanism is. I know staff's having individual meetings. I know uh, many of us are reaching out. Mayor Grafstein had talked about reaching out. I would like to have them come and present to the public once again. I don't know what our mechanism is on that, but I am very, very disappointed. Uh, again, it's not that it's not that food going bad is. I mean, it's a problem in a in an inflation era like we have, where people are living paycheck to paycheck and maybe couldn't afford to throw out their food. But even more so, folks that are relying on their energy for things like uh, oxygen. It's just frustrating to not six, seven years later to have more and more failures. And a, a city our size shouldn't have this amount. And other neighbors don't. So I'm wondering why they didn't invest there. And I'd, I'd love to have them come back. Uh, I don't know if we can make them do it. Um, I'm sure that they wouldn't want to. But if there's any avenue where we can make them come back, uh, I would like to see that. And short of that, I would love us to uh, craft a resolution to send to them and the regulatory authorities. Uh, hopefully somebody will look at it and they can start making investments into the equipment that's been here since the 60s and 70s that they're not upgrading. Uh, so th that's, that's, my, that's my DTE rent. I will get off my soapbox there. And my last item is just where did the microphones go? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know how the people, I mean, I'm a loud person, uh, but I don't know how the people that would watch us on YouTube are going to hear and understand us. So I'll let you know. if, if, there's, if, there's a way, if there's a way that we can uh, get, get those back, I don't know if it was just a technical glitch, uh, but uh, I'd love for us, even though this is kind of a makeshift council chamber, uh, I still want to make sure that we're delivering the openness of these meetings to the general public uh, on replay, and if they can't hear it, then you know we might not as well, I mean, we might as well not even record it if they can't hear it. So, just my two cents, right? All right, thank you, Council Wright. Yeah, uh, to piggyback off of that, I just want to start off by offering sincere thanks and gratitude to the line workers of DTE and the folks who get up at three in the morning, two in the morning who some will still wear a pager or who might have a cell phone who have to go deal with the mess that we go through. Um, I did an internship with uh, DTE back when I was a young lad and they work hard and they work often. Um, I've lived in the city since 2007. I've experienced the power outages uh, once, at least once every year. <laughs> and um, you know, I want to just let you guys know, we talk about people who have equipment. Um, I have a CPAP machine. Um, CPAP machine literally breathes for you because you stop breathing maybe 10 to 20 times an hour. And so when that equipment goes out, it could be like life threatening because you aren't aware to know that you're not breathing. And so I say that not to uh, put some urgency on DTE's um, mind, but they should have a critical urgency, but to remind my fellow folks who have that type of equipment please prepare for a rainy day. Prepare for the power to go out. Um, we have a beautiful store in our city called Harbor Freight. I thought about it when they were talking about it. They sell battery packs. Have a backup plan. Prepare for things to go wrong. We are, unfortunately, going to lose power as hard as the folks are. I know, shocker, right? I'm, I'm sorry, it's gonna happen. Like, So just please prepare if you hear this and know. I, I too need to go out and get one of those battery packs for my CPAP machine because um, a lot of people have CPAP machines more than we probably realize. It's not always about being morbidly obese or being super elderly. Um, I have some friends who are like former athletes who have CPAP. I wish I was one of those former athletes. But um, I also want to shift in gears. I want to uh, apologize to uh, Barbara Shimura. I had a uh, Steve Harvey Miss America moment where I said the wrong name, so I sincerely apologize to her um, for that. So. Uh, apologies for, for doing that. Uh, I want to give kudos to the Madison Heights uh, Community Coalition. I had an opportunity to meet Anthony a couple of times, and this young man impresses me every time I've met him. He is prepared. Uh, Anthony is what I would call a game changer. Uh, he comes in, and he, he's the person that's going to be impactful in this community. So I'm very happy to see what he does in the folks of Community Coalition. I'm proud to be the um, council rep on that board, and um, I give all the kudos to Jordan, his son, too. Um, I nickname him Hollywood, but he's a, a fantastic uh, human being and a person, and I know he's going to 
leave a, a great impact on, on our community. So um, finally, I just wanted to uh, remind us all, uh, as we're talking about the street sweepers, one of the beauty in our city and the things we like about our city is how clean it is, how safe it is, uh, the school systems, the neighborhoods, it's awesome. And when we get equipment like that, the street sweeper equipment, one of the things that helps them out is when we move our cars off the street. I can't tell you how disappointing it is to see a street sweeper coming around the corner and they hit every house except for yours because there's a car parked in front of it. So there's like a U and clean streets except for your house. So just let's remember to be kind and let's remember to be courteous. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Sherman. Nothing, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Marsh. Nothing. Clerk's office. Nothing to see me. That's a robot. Um, I'm going to. What's that? You broke the trend. I broke the trend. <laughs> um, uh, so I want to say first, um, I made a mistake last time and I said the HRAC is having a sale, a native plant sale. Um, they are, but the one on the 14th of August uh, was the Environmental Citizens Committee sale. It was uh, nice and successful. They did a great job. Thank you to those that uh, went out and made a sale and did all the work. It's the first one that I've had to miss um, since we started doing these. Um, so. Um, thank you for all those that, um, especially Nicole Fox, who stepped up and really just made that go uh, seamlessly. Um, and thank you to everybody who went out and purchased native plants to plant in their home gardens. Um, the HRAC is having a sale, a um, native plant sale, on the, on the 18th of September. Um, and so uh, be on the lookout. It's always here at the, in the parking lot outside of the, park, the police department. Um, Plants are six fifty a piece, more or less, and um, I tell you what, my garden looks really good. Two years later, it, it just fills in. It's gorgeous. It's very exciting, and all native, good pollinator plants for our community. Um, uh, I'm not going to repeat everything everybody said about the power outages and DTE. Yeah, um, and uh, school starts on Monday for most of the kids in our district. Um, I'm both Lampier and Madison, I believe, um, and uh, includes my three. They are headed out to Edmondson and Page Middle School this year, so big changes, big exciting things happening, so good luck to all of our kids heading to, um, to the, their next year of schooling, and um, it'll, it'll be okay. <laughs> and um, I just want to say, uh, you know, thank you to everybody who applied for our boards and commissions. We still have some vacancies. We have some. We made appointments today um, to uh, boards and um, still remain open seats because we didn't have enough people who had applied for vacant seats on our boards and commissions. So please, um, if you are interested, we'll be appointing again in February. Please um, apply for these positions. We need more than the same 10 people, 12 people, 30 people on all these boards and commissions. These are working boards. These are working commissions. These are people who are doing stuff in our community and we invite everyone to apply. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Solis. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, real quick, uh, the Nature Center. Uh, so I ride my bike uh, in the morning and uh, if, you have a, if you have a dog, please have it on a short leash. I mean, I don't know how many times I'm going to be dodging these dogs that are going to take a bite out of me. But, um, mayor Pro Tem was correct. It was about six years ago, and that was when uh, Brian Arbwell was the mayor. And it was Mark was there, the mayor was there, and I was on the same spot. And so they we asked them to come in and talk with us, and it was uh, it was like their cheerleaders, right? They were just marketing people. And so the one, so we were asking some huge tough questions, uh, and just drilling them with and trying to get uh, these answers. And they just kept up saying. Um, that they, uh, it's, it's the trees, they have to trim the trees, that's the problem, right? And so they talk about it, um, uh, the tree guy, Arborist, right? And, they, and uh, they said, oh, that's what he told us. And I said, well, it took how many years for <laughs> you figure that out? Um, and so they, they were just stunned. It was like deer in headlights, um, how we just kept uh, hitting with the, the questions. And then what I heard from the previous city manager is that they said they would never come back <laughs> because um, but you know, it did turn around. I mean, it didn't replace that um, that station, but uh, you could see the difference between uh, the power going out or not, or how long it was too, right? Uh, where they prioritized it. But uh, another thing is that uh, my first term, I did a child poverty report. Um, in my second term, I did a, a 
child maltreatment and abuse report, um, and I got the data through the state. And so uh, I had to, this time, FOIA uh, the information and took probably about four weeks to get it, um, but I did get it. And so I'm looking at over uh, to present a, another child uh, maltreatment and abuse report for Madison Heights um, City only. Uh, so that should be coming out pretty soon. And that's all. For everyone who came out this evening, um, it's okay. it's covered. Um, thank you to everybody who has applied to the boards and commissions. I uh, just want to throw out there that a lot of the boards do have subcommittees. So if you apply to a board and um, you weren't appointed, check and see. The, the meetings are all open to the public, so you are welcome to go. And um, there may be a subcommittee, there may be a project that's being worked on that you can help with. Um, so just, uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, we do appointments again in February. We do some one-off appointments, but for the most part, we do them in February and in August. Um, I, on Saturday, Sunday, I can't keep up anymore with the power went out anymore, but um, I was going to ask Mrs. Marsh about inviting DTE today, and I figured that would be too last minute. And um, so the city is meeting with them. Um, the question can be asked for them to come to council because I think that our residents really need to be heard and um, I think it's absolutely disgusting what's happening right now. Um, I'm not going to belabor it. Everyone has mentioned it. Uh, everyone is aware, but we really need to um, hit home that, that these are real lives. These aren't just the, the dots on the grid and who's in the yellow and who's in the purple. It's who can't breathe right now who is going to have to go to the ER because they can't take their medicine, like who, who is hurt, who, who can we really, can we be helping here. So that just needs to, um, that point needs to be made. So whether they come or not, that point needs to be made. Um, Councilwoman Aaron, thank you. Uh, yeah, Rosh Hashanah coming up next month, um, followed 10 days later by Yom Kippur. Those are the two high holidays uh, on the Jewish calendar. Um, I will not be here. I'm going to guess that the Shermans will not be here, and I know that Councilman Fleming will not be here. So, um, I mean, there's still five people still have the meeting, but if two other people choose to uh, not come or are unavailable, then we automatically can't have a meeting because we won't have quorum. Since I've been on council, the only meeting that I remember being canceled was um, it was a relatively light agenda, and there was a snowstorm going on and the library closed early and the city manager just called everyone on council and said really bad weather i think everything can wait two weeks what do you think and enough people said yeah i, I think it can wait as well so um you know rewriting the charter is not something i'm looking at doing right now it might be and if we do then that you know definitely could be a part of it but for this specific meeting um and you know mayor pro temple has said this uh, this meeting going an hour and a half is the longest one we've had in a while um, and a large part of that was the board's uh, the board appointment. So if there's nothing that has to be discussed at the end of September, if there's nothing that's time sensitive and um, we could just not have the meeting, I, you know, I don't know how that would work, but if there are a couple of council people who said, you know, it doesn't look like there's anything that's going to be that important and it can wait, and we just uh, got around it that way, that would be great. Um, I'm excited to see what the city is going to do for Rosh Hashanah. I don't believe that uh, we've actually done anything so that would be kind of cool to see what the HREC is doing this year um, want to thank all the line workers uh, for from DTE and uh, you know who other people who are coming in from other areas uh, you know when we have these issues a lot of times it's not just the people who live here we get people coming from out of state you know they do pull the resources together and I don't think any of us are upset with the actual crews I think that we're upset that this continues to happen. I think that we're upset because people lost their power and we're like, oh, I lost my power for a day and I'm frustrated, but whatever. And then it happened again and again and again. And it keeps happening. And um, you know, all these people, they're on generators and they're being told, okay, well, we're gonna turn off your power for like half an hour from midnight to two. Okay, you know what, that shouldn't be a big deal. But there are people to whom that is a big deal, but thank you for letting us know. We'll, we'll make arrangement for that half hour, hour period there. And then boom, it goes out again. And it's, it's just, it's not acceptable. And we need to do something about it. So we are working on it. There's only so much we can do. It's not ours. Um, 
but we are relaying the messages, we are hearing the stories, and we all, I know I speak for everyone, we feel for, we feel for everyone who is going through this. And on that note, I also want to um, thank the DPS crew. I was out today and I saw this huge branches and pieces of tree that just fell. So, um, and I, I saw these guys that are out, you know, blocking traffic, <laughs> getting them shredded, you know, just getting it done, getting it chipped and getting them out of the way. So, Mr. Almas, if you can pass on my thanks to them, I would appreciate that. Uh, our next meeting is going to be September 12th. The time is now 9.02 and this meeting is adjourned. Good night.